Known by many as the godfather of lo-fi hip-hop, James Dewitt Yancey, or better known by his stage names as JD or J Dilla, has become immortalized in hip-hop history as one of the most respected and beloved producers in the game. Sprouting from the underground hip-hop scene in Detroit, Michigan in the mid-1990s, Dilla dedicated his life to creative consistency, a career and discography showcases a man who wasn't afraid to take risks. Today, we are going to take a look at one of his most famous works ever, a 31-track studio album that would be released on his 32nd birthday and three days before his tragic passing. I am talking, of course, about the world, the sound, and the texture of Donuts. I want you and I to explore this album today, and let us just find out how good J. Dilla's Donuts actually was. If this is your first time here and you love exploring fascinating music, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn all notifications on, and let me know in the comments below which other albums I should explore for a future video. James was born in Detroit, Michigan, with both of his parents having musical backgrounds, his mother Maureen, a former opera singer, and his father Beverly, a jazz bassist. With a household full of sound, it was not long until James began falling into the clutches of the musical world, eventually developing a serious passion for hip-hop music in his early days. In high school, he would become friends with fellow classmates who eventually, along with him, would create the rap group Slum Village. It was around this time that James also took up beat making and spent full days and nights in his basement alone, training himself to produce all these beats while sampling off of records he collected to create the music. And yeah, the rest after that is history. <laughs> Jay Dilla would put out a tremendous amount of work, studio albums, extended plays, compilations, beats for other rappers and artists. The man was a workaholic for what he loved. A lot of these releases would end up coming to the surface or being packaged up for a release after he passed away in 2006, a sign of just how much product this man put out during his time here with us and how much more is still most likely unreleased. The one album I would love to discuss today and explore with you is an album called Donuts, released in 2006 under Stone's Throw Records. Donuts is the perfect record to get into Dilla with. It's a track list of over 30 songs with each their own vibe, their own mood, and their own story. It was an album solidifying the legacy of the producer, an album that came to fruition during one of J. Dilla's extended hospital stays in the summer of 2005. In 2002, James was diagnosed with TTP, an incurable blood disease, also while battling lupus at the same time. Eventually in 05, Dilla underwent treatments for complications brought on by his sickness, which caused him to work on two albums during his stay, Donuts and The Shining. 29 out of the 31 tracks from Donuts were recorded during this time using the compact and solid Boss SP-303, along with a small record player his friends brought him for further sampling. What makes Donuts truly fascinating to me is the fact that it was made by someone in their final hours, finding direction for music or just content creation in general, I can say this myself definitely, can be pretty difficult at times for many of us, you know, whether we just wake up and just can't find inspiration or just simply don't feel like putting in the effort that day. But for James, he knew that he had a timer. His days were numbered and he knew this is what people were going to remember him for. Nothing less and nothing more. His mother would later state that his conditions got so bad that she would massage his fingertips just so he can continue working on the album. He would wake up in the middle of the night and ask her to move him from his bed to the instrumentals. Jay took whatever time he had left to give people music and it's always a good reminder that you never know what may happen tomorrow so you might as well get cooking today. As I said earlier, Donuts is 31 tracks long with each track running from a minute to about a minute and a half each. I like to think of the songs on here as a bunch of snacks on this big platter. Salty, sweet, spicy, crunchy, smooth, velvety. Jay Dilla puts on a masterclass of texturized instrumental hip hop. Everything varies in style and tone that you are always waiting to see what he wants to bring out in the next track. You never want to turn it off. And with this depth chart of such short songs, this rapid change up process works very well on an album like Donuts and it keeps your mouth watering for more. Always, especially when you know the next song is right around the corner. The original press release for Donuts compared the album to scanning radio stations in an unfamiliar city, and I think that's a great way to explain it. Like the pastry it is named after, round and circular, the track list of Donuts comes full circle. The first track on the album, Donuts, 
outro is, well, you guessed it, obviously, an outro. While the last track is called Welcome to the Show, which is a fitting intro. The ending of Welcome to the Show flows right into the beginning of Donuts, ultimately creating this infinite loop on the track list. After that last track ends, you go right back into the first one. It's just like a donut. Eventually, Donuts was released on February 7th, 2006, on Jay Dilla's 32nd birthday. Three days later, he would pass away at his home in Los Angeles, California, according to his mother, the cause being cardiac arrest. Donuts would end up achieving an almost legendary status to producers and hip-hop fans alike. Everyone's got a favorite song on here, and discussing the work of Jay Dilla on Donuts specifically is really fun since there's so much variety and diversity between each song. Each song is diced up like a chop salad, of course with the best ingredients possible. Contagious vocal loops, hearty instrumentals, a wide range for the drums. Yeah, Pat Channington is a sucker for that shit, you better believe that. For me, I have a whole bunch of tracks I'll never be able to truly sort out or pick which one I think is the very best. My heart drops every time I hear that silky smooth rework of Dion Warwick's You're Gonna Need Me on track 6, Stop. Or what about the happy-go-lucky, walking in a colorful candy shop world of a track? Two can win, track number 17, that's a banger too. Or how about that incredibly sad yet happy banger? best way to describe it, of Don't Cry, which comes on right after that back-to-back -back heat. It's too much to handle, and whenever I'm listening to this album straight through, I always forget that they're paired up right next to one another, those two tracks. Dilla's world building on Donuts is impeccably beautiful. Each track hits all your senses and all your emotions, creating the perfect package for the modern-day hip-hop instrumental fanatic. Dilla is beyond what you see in most lo-fi hip-hop songs these days. There is such a feeling of authenticity and warmness behind every track a dreamy production you really feel in your bones. It's translated so easily what he was aiming to create and leave this world with. What I have here is the re-release of Donuts on a double LP by Stone's Throw I picked up a couple years back. This record, let me tell you, has some solid wear. I spin it a lot. I know a lot of people who obsess over the preservation of their records, and don't get me wrong, I'm all about, you know, keeping my records nice and clean, uh, but I don't know, I feel like some people just have their collection almost to the point where the charm of collecting vinyl and just listening to the damn thing is thrown out the window. And I can never be that way. I take this thing out of the sleeve so much and just throw it on the player and let it rock out. And I think Jay Dilla, I think he would have wanted it that way anyway. Dilla had such an ability to remain mellow on his beats all while supplying your eardrums with such soul, passion, and head rocking fun. Donuts being his final gift to us all. So, with all that being said, just how good was Donuts actually? I think a lot of art in this world, whether it be music, movies, shows, etc., they get this little boost in a way, in a weird way, if one of the main subjects who took part in creating set product passes away shortly before its release. Because of that, there is without a doubt this extra layer of lore, legacy, and impact given to something like Donuts, but I do think here it is deservingly so, no matter what the situation was for the producer behind it. In a world where 24-7 lo-fi hip-hop radios rule us all, the charm, authenticity, diverse range, and excellent worn production on Donuts seems to truly be ahead of its time and more catchy and memorable than most stuff coming out this very day. Donuts is easily my favorite collection of hip-hop instrumental tracks, wonderful replay value that makes me feel like I'm always walking the streets of Brooklyn, New York on a bright sunny day in August. And my friend, let me tell you, you just can't beat that. As I mentioned earlier, please let me know of any other albums or musical projects you'd want me to dive into for a future video in this series. I plan on releasing one of these every Tuesday, so I'm going to be dropping a bunch of these. I would love your suggestions, so hit me up. Let me know, baby. Also, real quick, if you're interested in helping the channel out as well as receiving a bunch of exclusive content and cool rewards, I'm going to leave a link for my Patreon page in the description below if you want to check that out. Thank you very, very, very much, and until next time. Thank you for watching. You're the best. I love you. And keep it real. We'll talk soon. Much love. Your boy, Pad Chennington.